Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, January the 29th. We are the last Sunday in uh, January of 2023. And it's technically a sunshiny day, but the temperatures are frosty. So the high today is uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius which is about, I think it's about zero degrees Fahrenheit. So frosty, 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 frosty. I think it's supposed to be cold for the next few days. Actually, I've got my phone here. I technically could look. I think it's supposed to warm up towards the end of the week. Yeah, we'll be up to a highs of about minus three degrees by Wednesday. So, you know better. Whew. Yes, it's been cold today. It was, it's um, got a lot of snow on Friday, really cold on Saturday, really cold today. It's winter. I live in Canada. I know. We talk about the weather a lot. It's frosty. Anyway, this is a channel about cross stitching and the stitching that I've done over the past week. So if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And as always, a really big thank you to those of you who um, have uh, our regular viewers and come back regularly to catch up on um, my stitching journey. Yeah, I'm having this moment where I've just realized that I have forgotten entirely to get the comments from last week's video. But I have multiple devices with me, so I should be able to do this on the fly. When you get the wrong one, you'd think I'd be able to figure this out. That looks better. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna go through them live. Uh, so Michelle, thank you for the comment. Um, I also had a good chuckle when I read your comment because she too has started her Christmas shopping for 2023. I'm not the only one who's made my first purchase. <laughs> I know. Somewhat uh, distressing for some people who, who enjoy uh, shopping a lot closer to the date of the event, but yes, um, there are a few of us who have already started our, our 2023 Christmas shopping. Carrie, uh, thank you very much for your comment because that was fantastic. So she made a comment about um, she too owns the X-Stitch app and has all of her digital patterns listed in there. Uh, many of the, and her, here's her comment which I found really helpful. Many of the designers on Etsy that I have bought from are listed in there. For example, Cute Patterns by Maria, which is one that I made a comment on. Um, and anything else she just puts in the miscellaneous. Uh, so that was actually really helpful. Because um, I, true, this is what they say about when you make assumptions. And I made the assumption that, you know, if you're if you're doing random designers from Etsy, that they're not going to be in, in X-Stitch. And to be perfectly honest, I never even looked. I just kind of went, it's a random Etsy, it's a random Etsy shop that I'm buying these patterns from. You know, it's not someone who is more well known as and where paper patterns are being distributed um, through the major cross stitching distributors. Why would they be in the app? Well, apparently some of them are in the app. So, uh, Carrie, that was a really fantastic comment. So thank you so much for that. Not that I've made a lot of progress on starting on that project, but. Uh, Oops. 
So there was a, a couple of comments that came in about um, how well coordinated my outfit was last week. And it's true. Um, to me, I think it's funny because, um, you know, when I'm recording, I can see on the screen what's going on. Like that's how I decide whether you can see what the project is looking like and what I'm trying to show and all that kind of stuff. But it really wasn't until I was uploading the video that I was looking at going like, wow, like that green in the in the sweater and the green in the in the chair they seem to go together and I might have a color palette that I enjoy um, Jay uh, Jay made a comment so he was thankful for all of the comments that came in that I was talking about last week on the suggestions for um, the Q snap um, <laughs> he made a comment on how much he wasn't necessarily enjoying working with whisper thread um anyway we all we all have our fibers that we are less than thrilled with working with anna had a really great chat question for me um so it was a question on the marbeck nativity um anna if you uh and i will send you a note on this as well but if you let me know what your Facebook name is, I was in the Marbeck group and I think I can invite you into the group on Facebook. So if I, I did search for you uh, based on your YouTube name and I couldn't find you in Facebook. So if you can send me what your Facebook name is, then I can invite you into the group. But her question was, um, what would I think about doing the Marbeck Nativity on a dark fabric? I think it would look stunning, 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 stunning. And um, if you want to see a couple of examples of it being stitched on a darker fabric, particularly a darker blue, just Google Marbeck Nativity and um, look at the images that come up. Because when I do it, there are several um, several versions that show up in the images that you can that when you do a Google search. Google search show up and show what that looks like on a uh, a darker blue fabric look fantastic it would be fantastic 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 so if you're concerned that it won't look good I wouldn't have any concerns about that I think it would look awesome um, and yes technically probably if I were um, had been stitching it from scratch I probably would have stitched it on a dark blue fabric to make it look like it was nighttime, um, but because I was, uh, I had picked up the piece where um, it had already been started. I was, I was finishing the project as started. So, um, yeah, I think it would look awesome on on a dark blue fabric. So, and again, uh, do the Google search, and you'll be able to come up with, um, you'll be able to see some examples. Roe Murphy, I thought that was a really great comment um, there uh, for my spring ABCs. They're working on the same project as well. <laughs> so this, I just want to say this is not a competition. We are not in a race, anything like that. Because the comment was, uh, let's see if I can keep up. Um, go at your pace. Go what makes you happy. You can go ahead. You can keep a pace. Don't worry about falling behind. We all have things anyway. It's not a not a competition uh, Rachel Q also is going like uh, she's got the same thing about uh, uh, struggling having some struggles about keeping track of her uh, electronic charts she made a comment that she thinks she's got more electronic charts than she has paper copies and like I don't know what I don't want to know what the number is of the electronic ones um, and K Yi, um, Desiree, is that you? Anyway, made a comment about um, just about how to enter, how to enter it. Uh, so in the X Stitch app, that you could sort of for all those miscellaneous designers that aren't necessarily so, uh, specific, identified as individual designers by the X Stitch app. That when you go under miscellaneous, if you sort of come up with an, an acronym that sort of says design, like designer name, then pattern, then at least you could group all of, um, if you had multiple 
charts by the same designer. So pick some random, um, uh, like two by two stitch art, which I don't know if it's in the X stitch, but we'll pick on them for the moment, right? Because I have multiple patterns that I've got from them. So if I did, you know, two by two dash and then did the pattern name, then at least you would be able to group them. Um, yes. And then Anna made a comment about um, how she keeps track of them and uploading them into OneDrive. Yeah, I'm debating the OneDrive thing. I haven't quite gotten there, so check back later to see if I do anything with that. Uh, I am doing better about trying to remember uh, to do my backups of my stitching ones. Um, and over the Christmas period, I did buy myself a one terabyte um, USB uh, flash drive. Uh, thank you, Sharjay, for your comment on that one. So I've got one that's a, a one terabyte one, so which is more than ample space to contain all of my um, uh, downloaded electronic charts. So it's it's got ample space for that. But um, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, Barbara Burdett, thank you so much. When I was having the problem talking about, uh, I couldn't remember the name of all of my frames. Yes, Arabesque, Handy Clamp. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Barbara. As soon as, as soon as I read the comment, I'm like, yes, that's what it's called. The Handy Clamps and my Omanics. As soon as, as soon as I get off of filming, I know exactly the words that I'm looking for, but anyway. So as always, thank you so much for the comments. Love that part. Because uh, I feel like we're having a conversation. Um, and with that, let's get into some stitching. So as uh, I tend to do, I've got my projects all stacked up in front of me in technically the order I worked on them. Um, so uh, starting with my Little House Needleworks eight Spring ABCs. This is my ABC sampler for 2023. Juggling. So where did I get to? Yeah, still haven't cut the fa the fabric. Um, so I got all the way down to E complete. So there is my white on this fabric. It's a little blown out in the camera, but in real life, I'm fine with how it looks. The one thing that I did end up changing is the yellow at the center of these flowers. I ripped that out um, and made it a little bit paler. You know I'm not great with yellow at the best of times and um, when it was standalone it was okay. But then Funnily enough, when I was stitching it with the white, because it was a stronger yellow, I felt that it was too, not that you can necessarily see the yellow on there, but again, in real life, I'm fine with how it looks. Um, so I, I ripped it out, took it down one notch in terms of color strength, and I'm, for me, I'm much happier with that. It suits my color palette, and I'm I'm totally fine with it. Like I say, the um, because I need to use a ring light when I'm filming in here, it is blowing it out a little bit, but it is, I'm, I'm happy with it in real life. So there is my ABC sampler. I am stitching this on a 28 count Star Sapphire Jobelin. Um, I was looking at my calendar uh, so originally I started off the year where I said as long as I had one letter done every two weeks it's great because it would be I, the SOS method of approaching uh, an alphabet sampler. But because these are so much, um, there's a lot less stitching in each of these letters than there were when I was doing sampler stitches, I am able on a Sunday evening after I do all my video thing, you know, video, upload, notes, dinner, etc. Um, I can knock out a letter relatively easily. So I have adjusted my schedule for myself so that instead of finishing one letter every two weeks, I want to finish one letter every week. 
Today is Sunday, January 29th. So tonight's stitching goal, by the end of tonight's stitching, uh, to keep on track with that plan, I should everything have everything up to the letter E completed, which is I run. So yes, I am already ahead of schedule a smidge. Let's not jinx ourselves um, because I have E completed. Um, so when I go to stitching tonight, my goal will be to get F done and maybe F plus a little bit, depending on how, how my timing goes. So, so far, uh, this is working out very well for me this year. So I'm really glad that I am continuing on with my plan to do um, stitching of some kind that has an alphabet so that I can keep that, um, that methodology um, that... I learned last year from doing sampler stitches uh, with Sarah the Stitch and Mommy. All right, and then of course we have uh, Twilight Star by Patricia Ann Designs. This is what it should look like when it's finished. And you should be able to tell me whether you're in agreement because I finished it this week. I wasn't 100% sure that it was going to be completed um, by uh, today when I was filming, um, but it absolutely was. In fact, it was complete. The stitching was fully complete before I went to library stitching. So I was able to take it on Saturday to library stitching and show the ladies what it looked like in real life. So I got all of it completed. I think it is lovely, lovely, lovely. You know, it's always great when you start a project that has been sitting in your stash for many years and working on it and enjoying how it's coming together. I, uh, I was gonna say, where is the rest of the chart? Cause I have the picture here. I don't have it handy. I am, I want to say that the copyright on this chart is in the early 2000s, like maybe 2002. So it's a 20 year old pattern. I've probably had it for a good, let's call it at least 15, probably 17 years. Um, and I think it's lovely. I uh, have stitched this on a 28 count white uh, Jobelin. So the called for fabric was a 28 count lint white linen. I did it on a 28 count white jobelin. Uh, so the exactly called for color and count. And I am very, very grateful that I went with the 28 count because the star that is here, this Mill Hill treasure uh, that's at the center of that top motif fits perfectly in there. If I had um, if I had stitched this on a 32 count, it would have overlapped some of that edging, which I'm not sure how I would have felt about that. So I am when I when I put the the snowflake on, I was like, oh thank heavens, I actually followed the instructions. Because I'm not the best about following instructions. We all know that. Um, so thank heavens I followed the instructions and stitched it on 28 count. Because that Mill Hill treasure fits perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. So I got it all done with all of the, the specialty stitches and the Krynik blending filament things plus Krynic number four braid and beads. So yeah, love how this looks. Uh, so thrilled that that is complete started. So this was one of my new year, new year's day new starts. And um, so I started uh, January Quaker, which has been completed. I started Twilight Star, which has been completed. And uh, the third one I started on New Year's Day was the Spring ABCs, which is not yet complete, but it is trucking along on its own pace and it's doing quite well. So, so far my new starts for 2023 are going swimmingly well. The question I have to put to all of you 
Um, cause I do want to put my initials in the year that I stitched it on here, but I am struggling on where exactly to put them, you know, given how particularly open this bottom is. And anyway, so if anybody's got some interesting thoughts or suggestions, um, please throw them down in the comment section down below. I'm trying to remind myself, like when I was working on the cottage of the month, that there were a few that... Um, it started in June where I was trying to get some other things and I sort of finished and went, I will I will come back and put my initials in it. And then I didn't do that until very late in the year, which meant then I had to go back and remember what colors I'd changed and all that kind of stuff so it would actually coordinate. Now, it will be easier on this because I used all of the called for fibers. But before I put all the fibers away, it would be really great if I could get my initials into that. So there we go. This is... Finish number two uh, for 2023. So we start, we're starting off the year very strong. I think it's great. Then, of course, this week was the 25th of January. And so on the 25th of every month, I am working on my um, little bits of Christmas by the drawn thread. Um... I'm adjusting this. It's conceptually going to be similar to this, but instead of having... Um, so this chart has a bunch of different um, options for how you can combine them. Um, so I'm, I'm taking a, a version of this, but just adding three more on top of it. So we'll end up being three across by four tall. And my goal is to finish, if I finish one of these blocks, because there's 12 of them, if I finish them one block a month, starting in December of 2022, by November 25th, it should be uh, fully stitched, which means there's a small possibility that it could be turned into a fully finished object sometime in the month of December. You'll notice by my tone of voice how confident I am in that option. I am, I was going to look this up and I forgot, but thank heavens for my X Stitch app because I can find it out. Oops. Well, it would help if I was looking under projects that were started, not projects that were finished. Little Bits of Christmas is being stitched on a 28 count Serene Lugana by Picture This Plus. And so my goal for this stitching was, um, so I had all of the red letters here and I had the two white birds. Um, but my goal for stitching this month, so this is month number two, is that these two blocks um, so I'm going, this is one block, this is block two, that these two blocks needed to be fully finished um, f for the January stitching. Um, now, it's mostly there. It's technically not 100% there, um, but a couple of things. I, I ripped out the white birds originally, and again with the ring light, it's blowing it out a little bit. They're white birds on this pale green fabric, but I'm, I don't know that I love it. I think it's okay. And in the context of where, of what I'm planning on putting this on, I think this is the right um, fabric choice. We'll keep stitching and doing more of the blocks, but um, if I don't think the birds stand out enough, I will just come back in and backstitch them with a light a gray of some kind just to give it a little more definition um, but I'm okay with that I wasn't happy with how the white stitches were looking um, when I finished this when I worked on this in December so I ripped out the white birds which was the start of my stitching on the 25th which I want to say Wednesday Let's see 22 three four five yeah Wednesday um, and restitch them. So I am happier with how they're looking now. I have changed the red that I'm using here. I am the red that I'm using is Gloriana Poinsettia. 
The dark green that I'm using is the called for dinky dyes from the chart. So the things that I did not get done is that sort of over here, sort of towards this back end, there are four stitches of red, which I missed when I was originally doing the red. And I didn't want to haul red out again because I know when I do my next block, it's going to be red because this is I'm, the next time when this comes out in February, I'll be stitching the block that has the CHR so that it will say Christmas. So I wasn't going to bring the red out again just to do the four stitches. I will catch those when I do my next block. And similarly, um, sort of this back stitching here of the vine carries over across this eye and into the next block. But I had finished my length of green thread and I went, and there's more back stitching over here. So I wasn't going to start and sort of end sort of halfway through a, a flow of pattern. Um, it goes over top of the R, which is why I didn't want to continue it as well, so I was okay with that. So technically not fully complete. Um, four red stitches and a little bit of back stitching here, but that will be easily um, caught up uh, when I work on this in February and do block number three. So I'm very happy with my progress on this. It's coming along nicely. I think the color I think the color combination is working out very well. So that's little bits of Christmas. And then um, I had a new start uh, on Saturday. Well, I started it a little bit before because I figured going to library stitching and trying to start a brand new project while I was at the library was not, not my best option. I was better off starting it before I got there which I did. And so I started, this is um, a free chart that I got from Stitching Corner in Cochrane by Stitchopolis called Let It Snow. And Lisa, just in case you were wondering, see, I told you I had another one. I am stitching this on a 32 count opalescent white Lugana. The called for fabric is 32 count opalescent white Belfast linen. So again, I'm actually using the called for fabric and brace yourselves. I'm actually using the called for fibers as well. And not only did I start it, and for those of you who were at the stitching with the library, you'll be surprised to see it is completely finished. I came home from the library and finished it up last night. I think it's lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I have an idea for how I want uh, this as a fully finished object. I have the concept in my head. I need to go out and find one thing. So as always with anything I work on, like we're not holding our breath that the fully finished object is gonna be showing up imminently, um, but there at least is a plan for it. So there it is, let it snow. Uh, these snowflakes are the called for Mill Hill snowflakes. Um, when you, uh, I have it, yes. It's Mill Hill 15001. And when you buy the uh, one package of that comes with four snowflakes in it. I only needed three, so I have one left over. I will also say if you've got the chart for this, uh, just in case you're wondering, my placement of my of the snowflakes is not where the purple dots are on the actual chart. Uh, so what I did is I took some needles and just sort of placed them on here and moved them around until I was happy with how they looked and then stitched them on. I stitched them on also with um, one strand of DMC white. I did not use my invisible beading thread for this um, because uh, for sure I knew I was going to have to drag it quite a long way but given that it's white on white I wasn't necessarily concerned about how that was going to look. So this is finish number three for 2023. 
Yay! All right. With that, so that's everything that I stitched on this week. So I felt like it was a pretty productive week. Um, from a stash acquisition perspective, I don't have anything to show you. So sorry to those of you who really enjoy seeing stash acquisitions. Um, yay for me because I didn't spend any money this week on anything. Anyway, there, there are stash acquisitions coming in. Coming. I did get some stitchy kindness this week, but you will see that when we get to the topic, which will be in just a couple of minutes. Um, and then um, one of the things that came up is uh, from the library stitching is we were talking about the uh, temperature Quaker chart by Stitch and Mommy. So Cheryl, Cheryl, yep, look up, look up. She couldn't remember what my color combination is that I showed on a previous video. <laughs> and just like me, she's like, you know you could go back and try to find the video where it is. And even I could go back and try to find out the video where it is and tell her where to go look. But the real answer is just hold up this, hold up the color palette again. So Cheryl, you're looking up now. So here is my proposed color palette for... Uh, stitching the uh, temperature Quaker by Stitch and Mommy, which is not in the schedule for 2023. It's going to have to occur sometime after that. Um, and this dark blue is the, this is like very cold to zero degrees Celsius and above zero. So Cheryl, let me know what you think about that. It came up because we were having a bit of a chuckle about um, too much yellow and orange necessarily. If you're having a really warm year, that it can turn into a lot of yellow and orange. And for some of us, myself included, those are not my favorite colors. It's okay when it's on a tree. It's not necessarily our favorite colors when it comes to other things. So, you know, clearly in this color palette, there's no... Uh, yellow or orange to be seen anyway so Cheryl there you go that's the color palette let me know what you think about that and that brings us to the topic for this week uh, let's talk library stitching um, so if you've watched my channel any any time in sort of like the last six months you'll know that I have um, been booking a room at the uh, Signal Hill Library here in Calgary uh, so that we can get together in person and stitch together uh, which has been great I've met wonderful ladies um, it's working out very well uh, a little bit of a note to those of you who have your names on my email distribution list for the stitching at the library look for an email coming out to you this week for some questions that I've got for you in terms of a couple of things um, which will impact um, potentially when we're getting together in February and anyway look for that email to come out um, at, at some point over the course of this week. I make no promises. If I were really good it would come out tomorrow but depending on how the schedule tomorrow goes it may or may not happen so hopefully I'm going to get it out this week. Anyway so stitching at the library um, so one of the things, um, this is where my lessons learned from 2022 are um, rolling over into my stitching plan for 2023. And what I did last year um, is once I started that StitchCon piece, it became my library project and I only worked on it when I was um, when we were having a get together at the library, you know, in some instances, only stitching at stitching on that project while I was at the library stitching, which don't get me wrong. I don't get a lot of stitching done at the library. I get some stitching done. I don't get a lot of stitching done because we're talking and we're doing things and we're looking at things and we're looking at each other's projects and 27 other things. I get easily distracted 
Um, so it's not necessarily, it's a really great time and I, we're absolutely continuing it, but I don't necessarily get, you'd think for three hours of stitching, I would get a lot of stitching in. It's not necessarily my most productive three hours, but that's not the big point. Um, but I did learn that it was really great to have a project that I designated as my library stitching project. And really what it was is it was another opportunity for me to add something to my stitching plans that I could get accomplished. I didn't feel like it was taking a lot of time away from other, um, from the rest of my plan. Um, when I started working on the StitchCon piece last year, it wasn't in my plan at all. In fact, when I brought it back, I said, I don't know when I'm gonna stitch this. And then it became, I really feel like I need to stitch this in 2022. And that's how it became my library project. And anyway, but I went, it was really great having a designated library project. Whenever we have the, the stitching get together, that's when I worked on it. Now, let it snow. Um, yes, I brought it home and I finished it up at home. Um, again, really thrilled with it. And I had that flexibility because when I was looking at my goals for the month of January, I'm feeling very, very accomplished. January Quaker finished, Twilight Star finished, library stitching. I had the time to uh, work on this and get it finished. So I felt that was a really productive option. For my library stitching plans on a go forward basis, I'm not necessarily gonna say that I will always have that time that, you know, you know, that I will be able to devote more time on a Saturday to my library project. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. So what I did in preparation for 2023, because we all know I like to plan in advance and kit up. So what I did was I got a really big bag and inside this bag is a bunch of projects that I have designated as library stitching projects. These are not fully kitted up. Um, so when, when to myself I say, is your 2023 kitted up, ready to go? That's really, from my perspective, the, the major projects and plans that I've got going. These ones I'm gonna kit up as I go along because they're um, smaller projects. They are ones where I feel like I have absolute ability to randomly go, ooh, I found, you know, it's one of those like shiny new objects, like, ooh, I just got blah, 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 and forget everything else in this bag, I wanna stitch on this, and that would be totally fine. So I, my plan is, yes, I've got a whole bunch of them pre-thought pre out as being uh, library stitching appropriate. They're sitting in this bag. Um, and then when my goal is to start one and work on it until it's finished and then start another one, that's all there is to it. Isn't that easy? Start one, finish it, start another one. <laughs> Isn't that a plan? So my January one was started and finished. So when I go for February stitching, um, I have another one and it is gonna be this one that is currently sitting in this pink bag. This pink bag, um, I already looked ahead and went, this one is actually uh, fully kitted. The fabric is sitting in the bag. So I have the fabric, I have the threads, it's ready to go. Now that I've finished Let It Snow, I have can take the pink and I've talked about it on floss tube I can now take the pink bag out of this bag put it into my library stitching bag so that I'll be ready to go for library stitching in February which is great so that's my plan for this year is that I've got these you know smaller projects um, I want to say so let it snow was you know, 83 wide by 38 high. One of them is, one of them, you know, they can be bigger, 185 wide by 55 high. What else have I got going on in here? Um, Got one in here. 
oh, 50, 52 wide by 52 high, right? So they're, they tend to be on a little bit on the smaller size. But again, I will stitch on them until they're complete. And how many that works out to be is however many more that are going to be stitched on in, in the year and will add to my completed project for the year, which is going to be great. So I'm really pleased with this, this concept. Again, complete flexibility. I can, I can take things out, I can put things in, which is why these ones are not fully, fully kitted up. But given the size and the nature of these projects, it should be relatively simple about kitting them up. I don't think they call for anything dramatically hard to find. So I'm feeling good about this concept. Check back later. Let's see in six months how it's working out for me and see if I've changed anything. So that is my plan for library stitching. Um, I do want to say, and I've said it before, whenever I do the announcements, when I've actually booked the next one, that if you're in the greater Calgary area, you are more than welcome to come. You don't necessarily need to let me know in advance that you're coming. We've got room to add more people, no problem. And it was really great because on Saturday, we had someone who just showed up. Yes, she watched, yes, she watches Floss Tube and all that kind of stuff. She didn't let me sh know she was coming, which was totally great. I have no problems because we've got lots of room. So she came in and it was awesome. So her name is Lisa. Here's the amazing thing. She came down from Edmonton to attend the stitching at the library. She came down from Edmonton. Now, if you're not in Alberta here, up here in Canada, so we're talking a three hour drive. She drove for three hours to come to the stitching at the library. At the end of it, she was looking at a three hour drive to get home. We had had a lot of snow on the Friday, uh, both here and in Edmonton. So anyway, she told us that, that the highway roads were actually in, in pretty good shape. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going like, you know my line about safety first, right? She's like, no, no, the roads were good. Anyway, she came for, she drove for three hours to come and stitch with us. It was really fantastic. She's lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, there is a retreat going on in Edmonton in June. She signed up for that. So um, for any of you who are attending, look out for Lisa because she will be attending. Not only did she drive for three hours to come and stitch with us, she came bearing gifts, which was totally not necessary and incredibly generous, incredibly generous. She brought us chocolates, which is really lovely. And, and so here's where the stitchy kindness, the chocolates were good too. So that's stitchy kindness as well. But she brought ring bling for everybody just a minute let me find let me find a piece of paper to hold this up against there we go i got this isn't it lovely she had one for everybody that was there so lisa um I know I thanked you while you were there in person, but I'm saying it again publicly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was incredibly generous. You did not have to bring presents when you came, but it is lovely. And now that I've shown it, it gets to be attached to something. And she has a little tag on it that says, so nice to meet you. Isn't that lovely? Ugh, it's lovely. So. Thank you, Lisa. Totally unnecessary, but very much appreciated. Yes, incredibly generous. Thank you so much. We also had, um, now this is my fault because I talked about that I had a poster and I mapped out a poster and I need to print out the poster so that I can attach it. 
we had a number of ladies who were walking by and looking in. And in fact, when I was setting up, um, there was someone from the program before me who was trying to work out a technological problem in the room. She didn't solve the problem while she was there, <laughs> which anyway makes it a little harder for me to believe that I would be able to solve technological problems in that room. But we ended up having a really interesting conversation about stitching and she knows how to cross stitch. And she hasn't done it in a while, but she found it was interesting. We told her she was welcome to stay as we were sort of starting out and she could stay as long as she liked. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if she ever makes an appearance again. Um, told her about floss tube. So I need to get my sign to put onto the library door that says, are you interested in cross stitching? Come on in. But we did have a lady who came in and she dropped off a poster, which I am going to share with you. Um, and again, so if you are in the Calgary area, so she left us with this poster for Auspicious Blessings, a silk embroidery exhibition. Now, where do you go to find this exhibition? It's going to be at the Calgary Central Library. Uh, which is the one downtown, uh, so the, um, for anybody in the greater Calgary area, so the new downtown Calgary location, um, it looks like it's on level, level four of the central library, and it's running uh, through the entire month of March. So you will be seeing this poster uh, on this Floss Tube channel uh, now through the entire month of March. Uh, in case you're interested in going and seeing uh, some diff well, uh, some different embroidery. So it is Korean based embroidery. Um, so yeah, my goal, my goal is to actually go and have a look at it. So hopefully I will be able to report back on one of my floss tubes in March. Um, but you'll be seeing this. Um, yeah, so if you're in the area and you've got the ability, uh, here is a needlework exhibition uh, that will uh, would be free to go see at the library downtown. So yeah, so it was we had somebody new. We had a couple of people that you know dropped in that um, didn't know anything about floss tube or anything. So it was really great having that. So I am thrilled that we've got the library stitching going. Um, Lisa even said she was planning on coming back and she would be making the trip again. So I think, you know, it, it will be lovely to see her again. But I just sit here and go like, man, that's a three hour drive in each direction to come, come to little old stitching with us. But it was lovely meeting her. She's really lovely and wonderful. And uh, like I say, for anybody who's attending um, the uh, retreat in Edmonton in June, Lisa is planning on being there. So you'll have an opportunity to see her. So um, she might even self-identify and go, I was the one that was <laughs> drove down in January after the big, after the big snow to attend stitching anyway. So as always, when, uh, so next week, I'm expecting that I'll be able to announce the date for the next stitching at the library. Um, so as always, if you are in the greater Calgary area or, you know, willing to travel any amount of distance, you, you are always welcome to come and attend. You do not have to let me know in advance at the moment. We have lots of room to add stitchers, you know, and even with the number of people that I have on my email distribution list, welcome to life. We have yet to have a Saturday where everybody who's on my list has been able to attend. So we've got, you know, that's life. Not everybody can make it every Saturday and that's okay. The other thing is don't think, I usually try to book the library for chunks of about three hours, but it doesn't mean you have to come for the full three hours. You don't have to come at the very beginning. You can come later. You don't have to stay for a full three hours. It's very, very flexible. Um, so don't feel like there's any pressure. If you're someone who's nervous about coming, you could come uh, let's you could come like an hour into it and say i only have an hour available and so you could try us out for an hour and make your decision after that 
Um, so don't feel like you have to come for the full three hours, but you're more than welcome to come for the whole thing. So anybody in the greater Calgary area, or if you know of someone who's in the greater Calgary area and you think would like to um, have the opportunity to stitch in person and have those conversations with people about their stitching, everybody is welcome. So with that, um, yeah, so that's how library stitching is going. That's my plans for what my stitching is going to is going to look like uh, for library stitching over the course of 2023. So every month you'll have an opportunity to see what the library stitching project is. And that's what I've got for you this week. So um, as always, thinking of the people of the Ukraine. I was going to look up to see when I originally started talking about the people of the Ukraine because we've got to be coming up on a one year anniversary here. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't believe that it has gone on this long. But um, anyway, thinking about the people of the Ukraine and uh, given the large amount, well, it's not a huge dump of snow, but it was enough to make the road slick and there were a lot of accidents and the road conditions weren't necessarily great inside the city. Uh, so it was a great weekend for my, you know, my watchwords, safety first, safety first, safety first. So I hope you are staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy and I hope that you're finding some time to do some stitching and that your stitching is bringing you enjoyment and mostly pleasure. We all know we've got those moments. So enjoyment, pleasure, stress relief, um, taking your mind off of things, um, a distraction if you need it. So I hope it's everything that you need it to be. And um, if, uh, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, topics that you would like me to discuss, happy to have those in the comments section down below. Love having the conversation and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.